and we were producing you know, the equivalent of colorful little plastic cars which look similar and you know, there's a bit of customization you could do about how it looks um, and how it behaves, but in essence it's, it was a single product. And a client approached me and they wanted a very heavily customized version. They wanted to add all sorts of extra functionality, they wanted it to look quite different. Um, you know, the Joomla MVC, JVents was already Joomla MVC and there was a way there of doing some of that customization, but you know, they wanted a lot more beyond that. In terms of the look and feel, JEvents already handled different layouts. You could basically switch between themes so that it could look quite different. So we could handle some of it that way, but um, not, of all it, not all of it by any means. So we needed a lot more because their needs were very specialized. Also, they wanted some exclusive functionality. You know, they wanted functionality that was specific to them and they didn't really want it to go out to the community. Um, and to be honest, it probably wasn't going to appeal to very many people. It was very specialized. So it was more than most people needed. So I thought, I don't want to maintain two, two separate versions. I didn't want the Volkswagen Beetle plus the Ferrari built, built on the same engine. It was going to become a nightmare to try and manage that. So I got to thinking, how do I make J events extensible? So what does extensibility mean? Well, it means to me that the client is happy. The whole thing is easier to maintain, the different versions. And I realized, not initially, but afterwards, that um, this was also an opportunity for me to develop add-ons which I could sell or make available free to the community and other people who wanted to use them. So there was a bonus in doing that. So what needed to be extensible? It needed to be extensible in the presentation layer, how it looked and felt, the data extraction, the data that we got, that we were to, to display, and the filtering and control of the user's interactions with the website. So that looks Somewhat familiar, doesn't it? MVC or VMC. So let's tackle the presentation layer. You know, that's, that looks a bit like um, Joomla MVC now. You can change you know, a lot of things, but in essence, it's the same, same underlying product. We needed custom layers. Well, I already had those in JEvents. You could basically have a calendar that looked quite different from one to the other. So meeting that need of the client was fairly straightforward. I just created them a specific layout. That was fine. Um, the other idea I had was developing helper functions. I'll describe what those are in the context of the presentation layer in just a minute. Um, but even having done that, I wanted to be able to override almost everything. You know, Joomla 1.5 allowed you to over, override the template, the output, but there was no mechanism for overlay, um, overriding languages, um, overriding assets. You'd have to basically do that custom. Now, a lot of that's built into 1.6, which is a big bonus. Um, but we needed it, well, I didn't know that was going to be in 1.6 when I started this. Um, so this is basically taking the view side of Joomla one step further. So a little bit of background to the custom layouts within JEvents. It uses a slightly different view structure. Um, basically, you know, you have, in, you have in normal Joomla, you have your views and the different list of views, and then under these would be the TMPL folders and the, the layouts within those. What we have in JEvents is our layout and then all the different views. So we would have you know, alternative layout, default layout, ext layout, garant layout, written layout. You know, there's a long list of them. But we can also intersperse them with these, this is where the editing routines live. So the editing routines are outside the layouts, but we have separate layouts. So we could do the layouts within the MVC framework. And that, all that needs to happen. Is that big enough? Can you read that? Basically, you know, it's slightly different way of getting the view within the controller. You basically have to add um, an extra path, here it is, the template path, to the arguments for get view. And now you can look for the view in a different folder because of the base path. So the base path has been changed by adding the theme, our layout, into the path. And we can override that by putting, telling it where to look in the template for that. So it's very easy just to have the different layouts. So that's just a little tip if you're writing um, components that you want to be able to have different layouts. It's a very easy way to do that. Um, what I found I needed was the same sort of routines. You know, all my different layouts were using the same function calls. Some of them were using specialized function calls that only apply to them. Some of my layouts were using a different version of the same function call to other layouts. So what I developed was a view helper function and that relies on the PHP magic call method and reflection. So it basically figured out 
You know, you just call a function that hasn't been declared anywhere. The view says, I don't have this method. Is there a, a way of working out what that method is? So I define that within call, use reflection to find the context, pass the view object in as a reference. So now my helper method is um, declared usable and all it requires is to shove a file in. I have a naming convention, so I name it something like layout name of function dot PHP. So if I call that function, name of function with the arguments, it goes off, it finds that file, loads it, and uses it. And I can even override those within the template. So if I want a specialized layout for somebody, then I can override the normal helper function. So you can basically you know, override anything to your heart's content. Um, yeah, so that's basically how you'd call it. View, do something special. And you know, you've got a method that does it straight away. Is this making some sense so far? Um, so, overrides, uh, installable layouts. Um, we needed to, to create uh, an adapter class in the Joomla installer. So, if you look in Joomla, the, the libraries Joomla installers folder, um, you get a, there's an adapter folder which has like two or three at the moment. There isn't really a good way in Joomla of installing an installer adapter, so that's a little bit of a problem, but once you've got that adapter in there, you can then use the normal Joomla installer so I don't know if you've looked at some components or you've done it yourself, where you have an installer for your application and you want to install a plugin or you want to install some extra feature on your site for your component. Well, using this mechanism, you write your own adapter, then all of a sudden you can use the Joomla installer. You don't need to write your own or customized version of the installer. Um, yeah, I've talked about the template overrides different file structure and overriding languages and assets. Um, so I think it's great that that's in Joomla 1.6. I think it'll save a lot of hassle. The number of times people say, I want this word to say this or this phrase to say that, and you tell them, change the language file, but remember where you've changed it, because when you get an upgrade, you're going to lose it. So you don't have to worry about that anymore. So the data extraction layer, um, and this was something that we needed to do. We basically wanted to add extra information in. You're looking at an event. And you need extra information. You might need custom field. You might need a registration <coughs> form. You might want information about the booking agency. You might need information about the venue and so forth. So we needed to get that extra information into the event. And we also wanted to be able to filter on that extra information. You know, we wanted to know which events were at a location, which events were a per was a person going to be attending. Um, so we needed to change the data and how we get and use that data. We needed to do that in terms of filtering menus and modules. So create a menu item for the events at a particular venue um, or the latest, and the, a latest events module, so in the latest events created by a particular person. Um, filtering by the forms on a site. So you'd have um, a, a module that allows you to filter. So you, you have your list of events or your list of content or your list of whatever. Create a module that has filters on it and you can then change what you see by changing your filters, like sort of like a filtering search, um, and filtering based on the visitor. So you might have private content that's private to an individual, so it would know who the individual is, filter the information based on that person. So what I developed was a plugin that changes queries. And so, you know, this is a typical sort of query that you'd have in um, Joomla, select field one, field two, or whatever, from table one, where certain conditions apply. What we changed that to was select field one, field two, extra fields from table one, then extra joins, because you need to join extra tables in, extra where, and obviously when you're joining potentially lots of fields together, you need to occasionally group those together. So we had to force the grouping to work. Now, how do you actually go about changing those queries? Nope, I've lost it. I thought I had a slide that explains that. But basically, what we have is a plugin in the data um, handling code. So rather than, I don't follow the Joomla MVC exactly, so I don't have five or six models. I have a single model class and a separate query class. So all the queries are abstracted into one file. So every time I fetch a list of events, it uses the same query, so I never have to I don't have to have it repeated in lots and lots of different places. And just before I call that query, I have a plugin on list events. 
pass into that extra fields, extra joins, extra where, and group by. And then my plugins, each one of them knows what they want to do. So every time I join, I have to create a map, and the where knows what I've joined already, because I'm at the same plugin is attaching the join as is attaching the where statement. And so we then have um, a meaningful extra set of fields that you can add to the query, or an extra condition. And you get a, a set of data, which isn't what was there originally. It's uh, what you actually want. And then managing the controller, um, basically the idea there was to be able to direct visitors to separate add-ons. So rather than just being locked inside J events, it can divert you to other places, change the permissions of a person dynamically. So we have um, J events by itself doesn't allow you to have anonymous people creating events. So what we did was we had a plugin that allows non-visitors to be able to add events. So what that does is change their permissions temporarily, which allows them to then add the event. Um, and again, it can be used for controlling, editing, and publication process. So you know, if you want to add a workflow for approving content or approving an event, um, again, these sorts of publications can control and obviously, I mean, these sorts of uh, plugins can control the way that the controller deals with that, that data. Um, so within JEvents, what I've done is I've added custom fields. So configurable, you can create all sorts of custom fields. That's easy to do. Job social integration, um, event registration, managed locations, private events, group events, group calendars, and so forth, and tagging. That was all very, very easy to do. And you know, often from getting the concept of a plugin, to delivering it is less than half a day. So um, I think it's rather handy. And personally, I think this could be added to Joomla content without, you know, it's, it's basically adding like 10 lines of code to, to Joomla. And you could basically have CCK built into Joomla itself. You could create custom fields within content items. Um, it'd be very easy to create custom layouts. You could create paid content submission, um, restrict access to certain content to certain types of users, um, creating publication workflows and so forth, control, basically controlling what happens to, to content, um, adding tags to content. You know, I'm sure loads of people have lots of ideas for what could be done, but basically just using the concepts that I've been talking about of, of changing queries, of um, allowing almost everything to be overridden and these helper functions, all that becomes possible. So I think that was the last slide, actually. Yeah, um, so that's the last slide. So if you have questions, I can show you some examples of the code, show you some of it in action. Do you want me to run through any of it again, because I went too fast? Presumably, uh, the, these queries, you, you have like a query object, because you, uh, if, you, if you're trying to build the, the SQL strings, yes. uh, you're going to have to do it in a particular order. So you know, you've, got, you've got a query object, have you? So the plugins, it doesn't matter what order the plugins fire, in, it's, it's going to build the query correctly. Well, no, the way it works is that the filter um, does, has uh, a constructor, which basically gets the information from the, um, either from the menu item or from the query, the, the, UR, the URL. But then there's two, two methods. There's a um, get join and a get where. And the join always comes before the where. And I never have any um, subqueries. So basically, in a sense, it doesn't matter. The order of the where statements and the order of the joins, you know, ideally, you would, to optimize, you would change the order of the plugin so that the joins were optimized. But um, what I found is that as long as you've, you've got your tables indexed properly, um, MySQL does a pretty good job of figuring out which joins should be done first. Um, and it ends up being no real overhead for that. Now, obviously, if you've got subqueries and unions and things, you know, it gets more complicated. But you know, I'd say that 95% of queries that people use are you know, select from one or more table these fields with these conditions and maybe a having or a group by statement at the end. That stun silence, or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, fire away. <coughs> yep. Right. Getting old, I need glasses, I'm afraid. 
Um, I'm one of those people, if people use Zen Studio, I'm one of the, the people who are holding out using 5.51, I hate version 7. Okay, where are we? Plugins, J events. Actually, let's um, start off with the. Um, with the query, it's where the plugin gets called itself. So here we go, this is the DB, the J events DB model. So basically this is the model class and this basically handles all queries. It's separated from the, the data itself. Um, so the, the data model knows what it's going to do with this data. This basically just gets the data. So it converts it from you know, standard classes into the object that I actually want. So if I go down now, let's see if I can find. List icon events. So here, um, I'm looking for events between a start date and an end date. And so if you imagine with a calendar, I'm looking for events on a day, events in a week, events in a year, events in a month, events in a range of dates, I basically pump those all back into the same method at the end of the day, so I don't have to repeat the code in lots of places. So that's why I have this one method. And so I create some empty um, holders for the extra where, the extra join, the extra fields, whether it needs extra tables and the extra group. And I have a basic set of filters. So by default, I only show published events, um, I've got the option to show just my events, categories, events from a certain category, or searches. So those are the base set of filters. I'll show you the code for the filters in just a second. Um, and I basically then, um, yeah, we, don't, we won't worry about that. That's a specialist thing for dealing with modules. Um, yeah, here. So I've got a class here, um, J events, JV filter processing get instance. So should I, should I make that, can you read that or should I make it a bit bigger? That's fine? A little bit bigger. I can't remember how it works now. Yep. I can't, no, I can't remember the shortcut for making it bigger. Yep. Yep. No, I'm sorry, I can't do it. It's, um, the problem with uh, using the old version of Zen Studio is that it's incompatible with Java 1.6. So I've had to do a workaround, which means that my menu items don't appear on the top. So I can't, unfortunately, um, have to use everything by short keyboard shortcut. And I don't remember the keyboard shortcut for making it bigger. So sorry for that. So anyway, we have the data here. So you've got um, the extra where, the extra join, the extra fields, the extra tables, and needs group by is false. So that's basically where you start off. And as I said, this is to do with the filter module. We won't go into that in detail. But basically here you've got JV filter processing get instance for the filter array. It basically fetches the filters. And then it um, sets the where and join. So basically this goes off, calls all the filter classes, and each of them knows what sort of join it is and what the context is. And it adds those to the where and join um, arrays and updates whether or not the query needs to have a group in it. Then we go off to the dispatcher and call an on list ICAL events, again passing in by reference the extra fields, the extra tables, the extra where, and off the side of the screen the needs group by. They go off, work out what plugins are installed, which ones are active for this situation, and adapt those fields. And then we have down here, as long as there are some extra joins and some extra where's, um, implodes them to create meaningful queries. And then, You then have the, um, the select statement. It goes down, uh, down there. So you've got the select, all your fields, the extra join in there, the extra where, and uh, you then get the, the results that you need. Um, let's see. That is used for, oh yes, this is a technical thing. You don't need to worry about that. I was getting the IDs 
and I get the results separately for, the, for those IDs. But, so this is the real, the real query when it adds the, the group by. And you basically then get from the query caching system the set of rows that you want. So if I then show you the filter that goes with that. Gary? Yes. Yes. Uh, how, how about just passing the actual all the query to the to the to the plugins rather than just extracting them and Yes, you could you could do that and have the so that they get more context like Yeah, yeah, you could do so that. that. They, they can actually maybe uh, rewrite some of the of what's already there. Yes. That, that's your I I'd be proof Yeah, that's that's probably the most powerful way of doing it, yeah. Sure. Um, well, I'll show you that the, 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 the plugins are actually very, very simple um, as a result. Uh, let's see if I can find you the easiest one. Uh, let's say lo location lookup, okay? Um, so this is looking for events at a specific location. And um, basically all the constructor is doing at the top there, all this is doing is basically finding out what the value of that filter should be. So it's, whether it's coming from a menu or coming from a, a query, um, that can be done in all sorts of different ways, of course. But then we have the create filter. Uh, what the create filter is doing is basically saying if the um, integer value of the filter is, not, is different to the, sorry, if it's the same as the null value, in other words, this filter is not active, it just returns a double quote. If it is active, it, um, checks the uh, filter value and um, puts the, into the where location, location ID equals the value of the filter. Then you've got the, well, actually this is not a good one because the, the join has already happened elsewhere. I know that because I'm being a bit lazy, but um, let's see if I can find an example which does have the join in. It's not too complicated. It's like the, actually the people look up at another one. An example. No, I keep finding ones we're always joined in. Um, oh, I know, tag look, that's a better one. Yeah, so here, this is the tag lookup. It's looking for tags in a range of values. And then you've got the join, it basically creates the tag map. And so, the tag map appears in the where, and we know that the tag is created as part of the join. So, you know, it's very, very simple. It's uh, for probably 99% of requirements. You don't need to change the, change the query. You know, you could do it that way as well. You could pass the whole query in. Yeah, yeah no, 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 it's, it's just a different way of doing it. Um, and then all, all my filters have a way of creating HTML, and what I can do with those is two things. Create a filter module so that um, on the front end of the site you can filter events by these filters or use them in the menu manager. So when I create a menu, uh, show you how that works. Let's go down to my events here. So um, we have here a few standard things, um, nothing very interesting at the top. We have all these additional constraints. And this took a bit of uh, jiggery pokery in terms of JavaScript to get it to work. But basically, you, know, you can choose tags. So basically, the create HTML method in the filter is being used by an extension to JParameter to be able to slot into my menu module the ability to filter you know this would now only show events which have got tags three four five and six associated with them you know whether or not they're going to be public or private events um you know whether people are going to be attending the events or not attending so you basically that same html can be used on the front end of the site to filter events so you know find the events at a particular location or for specifying which items should appear in a menu or a module Um, let me think, any other code that I can show you that's useful? Uh, it's probably not worth trying to show you that code because that was, uh, there's, there's actually um, 
a free add-on for J comments on um, J events, so anybody can download that. So you can actually see some of some of this in action on J comments without uh, joining the club. Um, Oh yes, one of one of the things worth showing you maybe is yeah, let's go back to the plugin. Actually, the plugin code itself. Where is it? Let's close these filters and go to let's find a good one. Yeah, JV locations. So um, this is the plugin code itself. Um, so you see here, I've got an on edit menu item method. And I have oop, a lot of stuff there because it's doing a lot of complex things. <laughs> um, on edit location. So if I'm editing a location, um, on edit custom down here. Um, on store custom details. So basically the same thing happens. It's not just for fetching data. It's on storing data as well. So um, when you're storing information, you get that extra, those extra fields in the object that's passed to the plugin, and the plugin can then store that information and associate it with the event. So that's how you get your custom fields. Um, and then here's the on list iCal events. And event date, let's go down to, yeah, the field name array. Um, basically, we also wanted a mechanism that people could customize the layout of the, of the event. And that needed to be aware of the plugins. So what we have here, if I go up, oops. All <coughs> right, okay, layout defaults are going to work. Now this might not be very pretty, actually, especially on a smaller screen here, but basically um, we have a WYSIWYG editor where you can um, control the layout of um, you know, the edit dialogues, the uh, mind form, the title and so forth. And basically we have a drop down here that starts, uh, yes it's a table, yeah, well I'm, I, for um, calendars I think we can get away with tables because calendars are always, um, always listed. Whenever you look at books about um, tableless design they say um, apart from calendars, of course, which are tabular by their very um, nature, so that's my, um, my excuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, the point is, though, you can actually make this layout whatever you want. You know, you could, you could start with something completely tableless or, you know, using HTML5 or whatever. Um, we have all the core JEvents fields here, but the add-ons all plug into this as well. So there's another method there that if I want... Um, I go down to the bottom of here. So is this what you meant by no, no, no. This, this is basically this. What I found is I, I, I did this business about overrides and layouts and so forth. And um, if you go to a, a, a professional person who's organising a website, um, they're fine. They understand about HTML. They can, you know, you tell them, copy this file from here into the template folder, change it. Copy this CSS and change it, and you're away. But about 40 or 50 percent of people are building their own sites. They don't understand that. They need something more simple. This is, this is, uh, for developers, no, for the non for the non-developers, for non-developers. Yes. Completely. Yes. Right. Well, I, yes. I haven't found that. Um, you, know, you don't actually need to use this. You don't have to use this because it's, if it's off by default, it uses the standard layout. And all your additional things appear at the bottom. But with calendars, often you have, like, say you have a, um, a theatre or a cinema, and they have events. You know, they've got a nice flyer. So they, we, they installed the standard image add-on to J-Events. They have um, information about the, the rating of the film, who it's appropriate for. So they create custom fields, you know, ratings, age groups, comments about the field. You know, it ties in with um, J comments and with J extended comments and things. Um, you know, where do you want those comments to appear? Do you always want the image in a particular place? Well, what I found is that a lot of these people are good at design, they're good at layout, but they don't understand um, editing code, 
showing them the back end and telling them all the fields. You've got, you've got to tell them, you know, this field is called this, this field is called that. It's actually not obvious because they've created all these add-ons trying to extract that data. You know, you have page after page after page. So these people actually have been very good at using this tool. You know, they'll have this on one screen, the other on the other screen. They'll do a refresh, see how it looks, and they can basically create um, to show you what, how different it looks. Uh, if I go down to, where's the big event? The big event. Oh, uh, this is, um, there should be a Google map on this, but I haven't, because this is just a development machine, you'll see here. So this layout has been customized to tie into Jom Social, so it looks as though you're in Jom Social. So some of the options down the side, um, over here, um, look like Jom Social. But the interesting business is the event detail page, so you've got a, a standardized image, um, which you can click on to get an, up, uh, an enlargement. So that is, you know, we just say select a thumbnail with a pop-up. And they know that will sit there. They can then um, put some CSS around that item, and it appears where they want it. Some information about the venue. They can put the list of artists in a corner, choose whether or not to show information about attendees and invites and so forth. And you know, that, that can then look pretty effective without too much work and too much knowledge of coding. Whereas if I go back to here and switch that off, unpublish that, and now reload this, what we end up with is all the add-ons just appear showing their default layout one after the other, because I've got no idea where people want it to appear. So it, it doesn't look very effective. So they, they either need to go into HTML and change the, the layout, finding the fields that they've got and so forth, or use this sort of tool. Yeah. Right. Right. But the point is, though, you have you have here. You've got a list of list of artists. You might have um, a set of tags. You might have three standardized image images. You might have two PDF flyers that you want to download. Um, you know, those have to be positioned. You know, you you either have to use lots of absolute positioning and some fairly complex CSS. Yes, yes, well, they can do that. With, it, with this system, they can either leave this layout unpublished and do it within the, um, it can't be within a template maker, can't be. You know, you couldn't have Utheme doing this because they don't know what add-ons have been installed. When you, when you create custom fields, the custom fields are unique to the installation. So they won't know that it's a text field. They won't know that it's a, um, an HTML field and which order they're in. So. Yes. Yes. No, you could definitely. Yes. Yes, yeah, I saw um, Emmanuel's talk about Flexi Content. Did, did you see? No, no. Basically, what he has in Flexi Content is because he has custom fields and he wants to work out where those are positioned. And he has, in the top corner of his um, layout, he has a wire, wireframe of the positions. And then he has a set of fields and he can drag and drop the fields into yeah. the positions. Yeah, that's, that's something, you know, having seen that, I thought that's a good idea. I'll, I'll probably do that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Well, they don't have, they don't have to use it. And I've, I've done the, yeah, but it, because by default, well, you know, most people don't have any add-ons. The standard layout is fine. And in fact, if they don't edit it, you know, if they edit, if they sort of just enable it, it's the same as the standard layout in any case, so it doesn't do any harm. Um, but it was basically, I developed it because lots of people were saying, you know, I want to put this field here, this field here, this field here. How do I find those fields? And 
trying to explain about the objects and how to get the data out within the template override was just becoming too complicated. Um, and, yeah. So, yeah, that was that. Yeah, and actually on the side here, you can see um, this is some of the filters. You know, we can select events by categories, the, by location, location, category. Um, it knows all about all the custom fields. It can just generate the um, filter by itself. Um, so, you know, personally, I think having the ability to do this within the Joomla core with content would be really good. And I think with Joomla 1.6, you know, um, Chris, the, the way the queries are created using jQuery, you know, there's an easy interface to that. But the problem is we probably have too many similar queries in too many different places, and you have to write the plugin to interface with all of them. Um, so that's the one downside of having separate models that produce similar queries. Yep. Um, so that we, we focus on code that is maintainable. Yep. Um, you, you can't get it right the first time. No. You, no. You, you design it specifically to be maintained, and you can change it without changing the core. Yep. Um, and I think that's the way forward. Yep. So things like JW database query, that kind of class, uh, makes it a lot simpler to do that. Yes. But you'd, you'd, you know, if you were to just to put in a plugin into J database query or J database, you you'd be spending probably quite a lot of processing time trying to figure out the context in which that's been called and whether it's appropriate to modify queries. That's the, the problem with that. Yeah. I'm learning this stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically what we've done with JEvents. It's basically meant that uh, I could do all this customization for the client and develop the JEvents Club, create lots of add-ons, and. You know, I've not yet found any problems with it. So, yeah. Okay.